And we were fairly happy for the use cases we had, but it still didn't work out of the box on all images. So that's, that's kind of a problem that we, that we had. Um, so for example, this Tishuna data set came out, which has a, a lot of images um, that look kind of like this. Uh, and if we run cell pose on these images out of the box, it looks okay. So ground truth is in purple models in the cell pose models in yellow. So it looks decent on this image, but then on these, these two images here, you can see there's a bunch of nuclei that were labeled in the ground truth that cell pose doesn't label. So cell pose just has never really been trained to segment nuclei without, without cytoplasm labels, like basically blue without green. So it, it doesn't know to segment these nuclei. Um, also, we, we tried uh, another recent data set that came out um, of live cell imaging from uh, several different cell lines. And if we run cell pose out of the box, you can see that cell pose um, misses quite a few of these cells as well. So um, in order to get cell pose to work on more different types of images, we need to retrain cell pose. And what we wanted to know was kind of how many labels do we actually need to retrain? Because ideally, it's not going to be the 60,000 that we used to create our original training set, because that's, that's painful. So, so how many labels do we actually need for retraining? So we take, if we take um, that example image I showed before, um, if we out of the box cell pose is missing these nuclei up in the upper right, the AP score is around 0.36. If we train cell pose on all of the ROIs that uh, this group labeled for this tissue class breast, so 131,000 ROIs, we do much better. So our AP score is 0.76. But again, like no one wants to label 130,000 ROIs. Um, but fortunately, if you retrain cell pose with just 400 ROIs already, the network starts to learn that, oh, actually, nuclei without cytoplasm labels are supposed to be segmented. And then around 2,000, you kind of, 2,000 labeled ROIs, you get this saturation of, of accuracy around 0.76. So we can uh, kind of summarize this across all the images and make a plot of the accuracy, this AP score, uh, versus the number of training ROIs that are used to retrain the model. So this from pre-trained is, is starting with the cell pose model and retraining. So you can see this curve goes up very quickly and then saturates um, around 2000 ROIs. And then if you start from scratch, it goes up not quite as quickly, but it still saturates pretty fast. Um, and we compare this performance to the model that was provided with the paper, which is trained on all of their images and all of their classes. So already with very few training ROIs, we can outperform um, a model trained on everything. So that's good news. You maybe don't need to label so much. Um, we found this was also true uh, for the live cell data set. So you can take an image like this. If you run the out of the box cell pose model, you're missing a lot of these cells here. Um, but after training with around 2000 to 3000 ROIs, you're doing a good job of segmenting all of these cells. And so if we look at the performance as a function of number of training ROIs, it takes a little bit longer with cell pose, but around 3000 to 4000 ROIs we're doing as well as or better than the model that's provided with a paper that's trained on all of the images. With live cell, we found actually starting from scratch uh, was worse, uh, substantially worse. You can see this curve is still going up. We think that's because the cell shapes in live cell are more difficult than in tissue net. So it, it helps a lot more to use the pre-trained model um, in the case of live cell. So starting with the cell post pre-trained model. Okay. So we were happy about this, that you don't need that many labels to retrain a, a model. And so, the solution we decided to try, try to implement was to allow users to make new models for their own data. Sorry, okay. Um, okay, so we, we wanted to make this, uh, make a, a solution for users that doesn't need many labels. We tried to reduce the labeling even further with this human in the loop training. So, um, I mean, 2000 ROIs is, is not too many, but like, you really don't want to label 2000 either. So hopefully we can reduce it even more is the goal. So this is how the human in the loop training uh, works that we implemented. Basically, you have this image, you run cell pose, and you get these segmentations in yellow. And then as a user, you correct them. So these are these manual ROIs that we draw in purple. And then what we do is basically after you do this manual correction, we retrain cell pose just on that one image. And if we do that, actually, things don't look so bad on the second image. So we show another, we run cell pose on the second image, like in your training folder, you see that there's not so many to correct. Now there's only 32 ROIs out of 174 to redraw. 
Um, and now we can train the model, do this again iteratively. So now we have two training images that we retrain the model on. We get, again, we don't need to label too many. We train the model with these three images. Uh, things don't, we label ideally even fewer things as a fraction. And then again, we don't need to correct so many of these ROIs. Once we've trained on, on four of these images, there's very few corrections that the user has to make. Um, and we saw a similar thing with, with, t with the training a live cell model. So you have to label maybe 52 out of 127 on the first image, but then by the last image, after training on four, you're labeling far fewer ROIs. So like 18 out of 293, which like if you had to label to all 293, like you wouldn't be very happy. So um, we thought this was, was, was useful. Also, one nice thing about doing things in the loop as you're and retraining the model as you go is that you know you can kind of figure out when you want to stop. You're like, okay, I've labeled enough. Whereas a lot of times with these projects, people will label a ton of images and not realize like how many they actually need, and then you're going to waste your time. So hopefully this means that you don't waste too much time when you're doing your labeling. Okay, so this is how it looks inside the cell pose GUI. So so if you're the 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 user here basically has just has run cell pose on this image and then corrected it and now is um, checking out the corrected image and then going to train the model. Uh, the nuclei are in red now instead of blue, by the way. Okay, so now they're training the model in the GUI. They're training on this one image that's listed here. Um, the training is starting and this is with a uh, RTX 2080 GPU and it's still pretty fast even on that GPU and a lot of you have better GPUs by now. So this, this ideally this training time isn't the, is an limiting factor. And so now once you've run the model, it, it, the, um, this training script, it loads in the next image in your folder and runs the new cell pose model on it that it's retrained. And you can see already just after one image, a lot of these nuclei that wouldn't have been labeled before that, that don't have cytoplasm are labeled by the model.